Following on from what Hilary Benn said, and given the analysis both by the bank and by the government yesterday on how catastrophic a no deal would be, and I know that the Prime Minister takes her responsibilities to our country very seriously. Will, therefore, the Prime Minister rule out that whatever happens in the vote on the 11th of December, that her government would consider leaving the European Union without a deal? Well, we will be leaving the European Union on the 29th of March 2019. And when we come to the vote on the 11th of December, uh, it will be for parliamentarians and members of parliament to determine whether they want to deliver on the vote that the British people took, and whether they want to do that with a good deal which actually does protect people's jobs into the future. Uh, that is, we, we are promoting a good deal. But that, with We're, respect, Prime Minister, that wasn't my question. I'm asking whether you will rule out the possibility <coughs> that on the 29th of March we could leave the European Union without a, a deal. Given what we know now from the Bank of England, from your government's own analysis, will you rule that out as a possibility? It would be so catastrophic. The, the decision that the House of Commons will take on the 11th of December it will be whether to, to support, whether to ratify the deal that the United Kingdom government has negotiated with the European so Union. If, Parliament... if, if, if the House votes down that deal at that point, then there will be some steps that will be necessary, because obviously we've been doing no deal planning as a government. We've made certain information available to businesses. Um, but at, at a point at which the if the House were to vote down the deal that has been agreed, given that the European Union has been clear that this is the deal that has been agreed and this is the deal that is on the table, then obviously decisions would have to be taken so in relation you, to the action that would need to so be taken. So if voted for, down the deal on the 11th of December, would you really, Prime Minister, given what we now know from the analysis, uh, contemplate taking Britain out of the European Union on the 29th of March without a deal, without your deal, without any if, deal? If Parliament votes down the deal on the 11th of December. There, will, there is then a process, as you know, that is in the legislation for the length of time for, uh, given for government to come back and make a statement about the next steps. But the timetable is such that actually some people would need to take some practical steps in relation to no deal if the, government were to vote, if the Parliament were to vote down uh, the deal on the 11th of December. OK, let's turn now to your deal. It's disappointing, Prime Minister, that your deal, the withdrawal agreement and the political declaration were not modelled in the government's own analysis and instead the analysis is on the July white paper rather than your deal. Um, why was that, Prime Minister? Is it because, frankly, there is insufficient detail in the political declaration to model it at all? The, uh, as you know, the political declaration sets a spectrum in relation to the balance of rights and obligations of access to the market versus uh, uh, acceptance of, uh, of rules, uh, which has obviously an impact on checks at the border. What we have done, that is, and the detail of that is being negotiated, it is still open for frictionless trade. Uh, what I have said in the House of Commons is that, and I've been honest with people, we haven't persuaded everybody in Europe yet about absolutely frictionless trade. The ambition is there to be as near frictionless in the political declaration, to be as near frictionless as possible. What we did do, we thought it was right to do, was to set out the sensitivity analysis of that spectrum. And we took a midpoint on that spectrum, which is the 50% sensitivity analysis, which has been identified. And I think if you look at some of the comments that have been given about the analysis that the government has put forward, for example, the chief economist of the IFG has been clear that they set tests that we needed to address to ensure MPs and others were able to scrutinise the modelling and interpret it appropriately. And those tests, the published report passes those tests and is something that should be taken seriously. But given that in July uh, the White Paper had in it frictionless trade, and as you just said, Prime Minister, the political declaration wasn't able to achieve that objective, can we assume that the, uh, um, the outcome of the, the political declaration without frictionless trade will be a worse economic outcome than what was in the July White Paper? The, uh, what the analysis has shown is a 50% sensitivity point. There's a spectrum in relation to that, uh, that uh, analysis, which, of course, goes alongside the spectrum of checks versus access to the markets. Uh, but it is not the case, it is still the government's position that we will be uh, negotiating to achieve uh, frictionless trade. What you see in the political declaration, and you'll see it in the language around the ambition for uh, ambitious customs arrangements in the future, is a clear recognition of the need 
to reduce that friction as much as possible. I think it's still better to reduce it to, uh, to have frictionless trade, um, but as I say, uh, there are those in the European Union who uh, have yet to be persuaded of that um, argument. Well, I think the European Union are very much in favour of frictionless trade. That's why they're in the single market and the customs union, Prime Minister. Um, you said yesterday in Prime Minister's questions that um, the, 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 the um, analysis does not show that we'll be poorer in the future, but the government analysis published yesterday shows that we'll be £100 billion a year as a country worse off £1,100 per person per year. So can you confirm that under all scenarios analysed by the um, government analysis, we will be poorer in the future compared with our current position in the European Union? Yes. That's what the government analysis shows, isn't it, Prime Minister? Can I explain why I, I, uh, what I said in the Prime Minister's questions and why I made that point? I think if you went out to a member of the public and said, we're going to be poorer outside the European Union than inside the European than, than we are today. They, 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 poorer outside the EU. They assume you mean poorer than today. Actually, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is the economy will continue to grow. We will be better off in the future. The question is about the relative rates of growth on, in, the, uh, in the different models that are identified. The point is that being inside the European Union is not an option. Mm -hmm. But you uh, say you can so confirm, what we, have to, what we have to look at is what is the best option outside the European Union because people have voted to leave the EU. And the best, what the analysis shows is that the best option outside the, the uh, European Union, uh, which de obviously delivers on the vote by being outside the EU, uh, but is also the best for jobs and the economy, I is the government's approach. I understand all that, Prime Minister, but can you confirm that under all scenarios modelled by the government, we will be poorer in the future compared with our current relationship with the European Union? Yes or no? What, what the analysis shows is that there will be an impact on the, growth, on the rate of growth in the United Kingdom looking ahead. Uh, other things being equal. But of course, and that other things will be negative. But, no, other, but other things will not necessarily be equal. This is why I made a slightly, um, what some might require, record a slightly flip comment about forecasts and economic forecasts in uh, response to a question in the statement, I think on Monday or, or last week. But the point is that there are many variables that can change that will impact in relation to uh, what happens to our economy outside the, uh, outside the European Union. Some of those are in our hands and decisions that we will be taking as a government. Obviously, there are other uh, aspects in terms of the interna international trade. You know, by, in 2020, 90% of the growth, in, in, uh, of, uh, growth is due to be outside the yes, European Union. Yes, but that is Union. all modelled with respect, Prime Minister, in the government. No, it's not all. No, no, it's not all modelled. The, the, the trade assumptions analysis. about the growth um, in the rest of the world is, is modelled, and the trade assumptions are in the government's but, uh, analysis. The government's analysis show under all scenarios we will be poorer compared with our current relationship. That is what the government analysis shows. Can I just be clear? The government analysis does not identify, does not deal with all the issues that I've spoken about, because it doesn't deal with decisions that government might take. It and it can't. Trade, Prime it can't. It assumes that we come to trade deals with the United States, Australia, um, um, yes. New Zealand and other countries, so that trade assumptions are in the government yes. analysis, Prime Minister.